from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. An argument ends in gunfire, and now one man is in the hospital. And this morning, police are still looking for a scene. The details from police just ahead here on GMSA. Health officials reporting alarming numbers of cases and deaths from coronavirus in the U.S. The latest updates on the pandemic in the country. And we saw Alicia out there all bundled up. That is because it is 33 degrees to start your Sunday morning. We're checking with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. Six o'clock this Sunday, January 3rd. I'm blaming the weather on you, Sarah Costa, because yesterday Why? you were like, it was 40 and you're like, oh, I gotta love this weather. And I was like, who are you? Now, okay, well, when I got into my car this morning mm -hmm. and it was so cold, I couldn't even touch my steering wheel. My steering <laughs> wheel, it was 39 degrees on my, on my car. And I was like, this is not right. I was like, it feels like it's freezing. And it's 33, Sarah Spivey. I mean, it's getting close. There are some areas that are dealing with freezing right now. I love that this is the way that Sarah drives her car. I couldn't hold, <laughs> I couldn't hold the wheel. It was so cold. <laughs> but Sarah, you're exactly right. There are some areas out there that are freezing. In fact, a light freeze going on in Helotus right now, where it's 31 degrees. Up in Bulverde, it's 30 degrees. A hard freeze up near Kerrville, it's 24 and 27 out in Bandera, 25 in Tarpley. So I wouldn't be surprised if even around San Antonio, we briefly touch freezing here before before uh, we see the sunrise uh, or later on this morning. Now coming up in the forecast, we got a couple of things to talk about. We'll have a steady warm up today, so it's not going to be a cold day throughout the day. And in fact, this week it'll be mainly quiet and dry with just some subtle changes from day to day. But there is a chance for rain, and so we'll talk about the chance for a few showers and storms in the middle of the week. A lot to talk about in the forecast. I'll have a look ahead coming up soon. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, police searching for the shooter that left one man in the hospital with serious wounds to his face. The victim called for help around 245 this morning in the 800 block of Darby Boulevard, but police say that's not where the shooting happened. Our Alicia Bodetta is live downtown with the latest on the investigation. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, the victim told police that the shooting actually happened about two miles away at Casiano Homes on the city's west side. So if you're familiar with Casiano Homes, that's right off of South Zarzamora, close to Guadalupe Street. And that argument, it wasn't with a sister, it was with a neighbor, and it escalated very quickly. Again, this all unfolded this morning around 2.45 a.m. According to police, the victim got into an argument with a woman that lives nearby. The woman's boyfriend heard what was going on, grabbed a gun, and fired it several times, striking that man in the face at least once. The victim is described to be a man in his, in his 30s. Police say the bullet grazed the man's cheek, leaving a pretty big wound. The man was eventually taken to University Hospital. But why is it that that victim was found about two miles away from that original scene? And where's the shooter now? I have that information from police in the next half hour. Back to you. Thank you, Alicia. Well, now to the latest officials with Joint Base San Antonio confirming a drill instructor assigned to Fort Sam Houston was shot and killed on New Year's Day. San Antonio police responded to a call for a shooting along I-10 near West Avenue. Officials say 30-year-old Jessica Ann Mitchell was shot several times. She was taken to the U to University Hospital but was later pronounced dead around 3 in the morning. San Antonio police and the Army CID is investigating. Not many details have been released at this point. Mitchell was on holiday leave at the time she was shot. Army officials are asking anyone with information that may help with this case to call SAPD homicide detectives at 210-207-7635. And police tell us a teenager who accidentally shot himself last weekend is now dead. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying that 16-year-old as Raymond Wesson. San Antonio police telling us Wesson was visiting his friend at a home off Jackie's farm last Saturday. The two teens were playing with a gun that belonged to his friend's parents. That's when investigators say Wesson accidentally pulled the trigger and shot himself. He was rushed to Brook Army Medical Center. That's where he died later. Uh, Wesson's family says now they're being left broken. He, I keep waiting to hear him come back in the house and say, Mom, I'm home. But it's not going to happen. We know that, obviously. I just feel like a big part of my heart's torn out. Although police tell us they do believe the shooting was an accident, they say charges are possible for the parents who were home at the time. However, that would depend on how accessible that gun was. The investigation is still ongoing.
Well, now to the latest coronavirus numbers in Bear County. City health officials reporting 1,298 new COVID-19 cases. This brings our total numbers of cases to more than 119,000 since the pandemic started. Health officials also reporting eight people who have died from this virus. Right now, there are 1,163 people hospitalized. 337 are in the ICU. 198 are on ventilators. 16% of staff beds and 53% of ventilators are available. And looking around the country this morning, alarming numbers as the death toll in the United States now surpassing 350,000 people. This as New York joins California, Texas and Florida with more than 1 million cases. Illinois is on track to be next. ABC's Christine Sloan has more. The coronavirus pandemic continuing to ravage the United States into the new year. California's health care system buckling. Many hospitals at or nearing capacity. Ambulances waiting hours to offload patients. Los Angeles County is arguably the nation's current epicenter of the pandemic. The director of the County Department of Public Health pleading with residents. We're not asking people to forego getting together with people for the rest of their lives. We're asking people to forego it for the next few weeks uh, while we ramp up our vaccination. Officials in North Carolina building a field hospital to help handle a surge in cases. Central Massachusetts seeing a 60 percent increase in hospitalizations since Thanksgiving. Just over the past three days, we've surpassed the number of patients in the hospital that we saw in the spring. Four states have still not yet vaccinated one half of one percent of their populations. In Knox County, Ohio, half the health department and 60 percent of EMS workers opted to forego vaccination for now. We're not going to make them, but we just you know, wish that they had a higher compliance. But many are eager for those shots. Houston's mayor visited the city's first public vaccination clinic, which planned on distributing 750 shots. They got 250,000 calls. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, nearly a dozen Republican senators, including Texas Senator Ted Cruz, say they will reject electoral college votes from multiple states. Congress is expected to certify President-elect Joe Biden's victory this coming week, but 11 Republican lawmakers say they intend to support an objection to the electoral college votes until a commission completes an emergency 10-day audit on the election process. The group includes Texas Senator Ted Cruz, Senators Ron Johnson of Wisconsin, James Lankford of Oklahoma, and more. And an appellate court throwing out another attempt to force Vice President Mike Pence to override the 2020 presidential election results as well. So it took just a few hours for the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals to dismiss the case from Representative Texas Representative Louis Gohmert. The Texas Republican wanted Vice President Mike Pence to interfere with Congress's electoral vote count. The appeal court says it agrees with the district court that Gohmert has no standing to make such a demand. Well, Bitcoin's value is at a record high. One Bitcoin is worth more than $34,000 as of yesterday evening. The virtual currency tripled in value during 2020. Investors have been adding it to their port portfolios. As the U.S. dollar has weakened, Bitcoin's popularity could grow more if the Federal Reserve maintains low interest rates as expected. Time now is 608, 33 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA. Why experts hope a new study teaches parents the importance of compassion and generosity in children. Plus, do you guys watch the show, The Mandalorian? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. Max. Not trendy. Well, welcome to society, Max. Uh, a surprise <laughs> guest makes an appearance in the season finale of The Mandalorian. We have the details next. Max, where have you been? You know, not a big TV person. I, I know, I know. It is what it is. Sports All right. and politics, best reality also, TV you need. It is what it is. It's 33 degrees. Ooh. It's cold outside. Will things warm up? And what does our forecast look like for the rest of the week? Sarah Spivey will let us know when we come back. Welcome back. Filmmaker Tyler Norwood hopes to remind people of the late Robin Williams legacy in a new documentary called Robin's Wish. The Oscar winner died by suicide at the age of 63. An autopsy later revealed that Williams actually suffering from Lewy body dementia, a brain disorder that affects movement and thinking. Williams' widow, Susan Schneider, approached Norwood to make the film, hoping to spread awareness of the disease. Robin's Wish will be available on digital and on demand tomorrow.
If you haven't seen the final episode of Mandalorian, there are some spoilers here. So Star Wars fans delirious over Luke Skywalker's, yes, Luke uh. Skywalker's surprise appearance in the Mandalorian season finale, and they are sharing their real-time reactions to it on YouTube. Mark Hamill tweeted that the fans' response was, quote, overwhelming and something he'll cherish forever. And that was my husband and I's reaction when yes. we were watching. Once we saw the green lightsaber, we were like, oh, my. And then once you see, like, it's his movements just yes. walking in, you're like, it has to be him. But I don't understand. Is it going to be his face? What are they going to do? So they used um, technology to yeah, make CGI. him to, to make him look younger. Mm -hmm. So I it left so many questions for the next season. You know, like, what are they going to do? Is it going to just be CGI Mark Hamill? It was pretty so neat. good. Pretty neat. Very cool. Something also pretty neat that we've been like, oh my goodness, is when looking at this camera right now, this is pointed to the north and to the northeast. In the sky this morning, the quadranted meteor shower is peaking. Uh, now, it, it peaks our January 3rd every year, and this year it's peaking pre-dawn. So if you wanted to try to look outside just over the next 30 minutes or so, uh, you might be able to see a few of those meteors look to the north and northeast portion of the sky. Uh, but again, it's best to get away from the city lights if you can. But with it peaking just now, <laughs> you might not be able to see too much uh, this evening. And now 33 degrees outside right now. This morning it is nice and chilly out there. Uh, in fact, we are seeing areas where it's freezing in some places. Uh, and it's a light freeze around San Antonio, but a hard freeze up in the hill country. Dew points are dry in 28 degree dew point right now, so very dry weather outside. 24 in Kerrville, 32 in Uvalde, 29 in Junction, 37 in New Braunfels, 37 in Gonzales, and 34 in Pleasanton. Again, there could be a few areas around San Antonio where we're seeing pockets uh, where temperatures are dipping to freezing. It's a cold start across all of the central plains right now, generally in the 30s for everybody and very quiet. It's a big travel day. If you have travel plans around the state of Texas by road. You won't run into any issues on the road as far as weather goes. It's going to be completely quiet for all of us across the great state of Texas today. Here in San Antonio we'll, and around San Antonio, the KSAT 12 viewing area, all sunshine. Afternoon high temperatures will be warmer than yesterday. Yesterday we got up to 62 degrees. Today will be 5 to 10 degrees warmer than that. 71 for the high in Del Rio, 73 in Eagle Pass, 75 in Catula, 71 for the high in Gonzales, upper 60s in Kerrville. Uh, 62 in Rock Springs for the high temperature and here in San Antonio at 10 will already be in the 50s at noon will be at 62 degrees and in the afternoon 70 degrees for our high temperature southwest winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. They can be breezy at times gusts up to about 25 miles per hour are possible and it'll be cold in the evening with temperatures falling into the 40s by 10. Like I mentioned, it's really dry out there. Dew points in the 20s and in the 30s over the next couple of days. We'll see some subtle changes to our our humidity tomorrow dew points will stay low. It'll be nice and sunny on Tuesday, though. We'll have higher dew points in the 40s and in the 50s, and we will have some more clouds on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday itself, we'll have enough moisture in the air to eke out a few showers as this cold front moves through on Wednesday in the afternoon. So let me take you through the future cast. So tomorrow morning, waking up a little bit warmer than today, still cold, though, in the 30s. And then in the afternoon tomorrow, 73 for the high temperature. Uh, but then by Tuesday, Today we'll have morning clouds and those morning clouds could be a little bit stubborn and hard to shake, but we should see some sun in the afternoon on Tuesday and then on Wednesday morning areas of drizzle are possible before that front arrives. You can see that the better chance for storms is going to be well to the east of I-35 and east of San Antonio, but we'll still include a 30% chance for some isolated showers and a few storms as well on Wednesday itself. Then we clear out on Thursday, a few more clouds on Friday. Now there are some hints that we could see a good rain chance next weekend, so we'll continue to update that forecast as we get closer to the weekend. For now, though, enjoy this beautiful weather today and tomorrow. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. 617, 33 degrees out. A grocery store, brewery, and ice cream parlor in Connecticut have collaborated to start selling a unique treat. Hmm, stories ahead. Interesting. I'm in. Plus, as parents, many of us want the best for our children, and for some, that may mean being kinder our kids and having them be kind to others next. Why experts hope a new study teaches parents the importance of compassion and generosity in children.
Good morning and welcome back. As parents, one of the most important lessons many of us want to teach kids is to always be kind to others. Be kind, and according to a new study, our children are more likely to be generous when their mothers are more compassionate and empathetic. Stephanie Serna explains. A new study on studyfinds.org further confirms the importance of a mother's compassion. The study showed that children with highly compassionate mothers are more likely to be more generous than their peers. Researchers also found that compassionate moms developed emotionally close relationships with their children, which made their kids more willing to give back to others. Experts say the positive effects can be seen in children as young as four years old. The study also revealed that being more generous has many significant biological benefits for kids, including feeling less anxious and stressed. Experts say this is because children feel calm after sharing, which reinforces their generous behavior. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 621, 33 degrees out. Well, we have heard about weird flavored ice cream, but a brewberry in Connecticut is going beyond by making a stout treat. This I think sounds... it was a brewery. Oh, I thought it was like ice cream and and brewery combined. Okay, well, we'll show you that treat coming up. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. A grocery store, brewery, and ice cream parlor in Connecticut. They're collaborating, working together to start selling a unique treat in ice cream flavored beer. Oh, the calories, it's called La Bada Why is that the first thing you think of? <laughs> well, yeah, of course. It's like all your favorite things <laughs> in one. Okay, it's called La Bada Bing from La, La Bon's Market, the stout's flavor profile will match the ice cream of the same name with notes of vanilla, chocolate, and Bing cherry. Mm. The beer is being made at the Transcend Beer Brewery in Southington. Okay, so the owner of that brewery says he's look for, looking forward to appealing to more customers. The ice cream flavored stout will be in stores on January 22nd. I would try it, would you? Yes. Okay. That sounds that sounds delicious. Now, is it something you eat all the time? Probably not, because beer is pretty high in calories. So is ice cream. Um, Have you tried like the wine ice cream? I think that's yes. Thing. Those are very good too. Very dangerous. <laughs> all right, six twenty six, thirty three degrees out. A Wisconsin waste worker is going viral on TikTok after he shared an important holiday message. His story. That's ahead in GMSA at eight. And next on GMSA, why doctors are saying we should expect things with COVID-19 to get worse before they get better. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. Just about 6.30 this morning, January 3rd, 33 degrees out. So Sarah, you're saying you had to hold the steering wheel like this? Yes, because my hands, it was so cold, it felt like ice. But you know, I did enjoy the warmer weather later on that we had yesterday. Um, so I went for a run. Sarah, I know you said you wanted to start running too. Uh -oh. Did you get out and run yesterday? Shaming no, I took a three hour nap. <laughs> oh. That's what I did. And the reason I'm a little upset about it is because uh, Max kind of shamed me about it yesterday in a nice brotherly way. He asked me if I was going to go for a run yesterday after I had just said that my resolution was to run more and I straight up told him, no, I'm going to nap. <laughs> but I think today I'll try to go for a run and you can keep me accountable for that. 33 degrees outside right now this morning. Winds are generally calm and it is dry outside. We are dealing with a light freeze in some areas around San Antonio. 30 degrees in Holotus, 31 in Bulverde. It's 32 at Rio Medina, th uh, 28 in Bandera, and 25 in Kerrville, 33 in Pleasanton. Now today we are going to warm up really quickly. We're going to get up to 70 degrees in the afternoon, so good running weather. It is going to be a little breezy though. Winds will be gusting from the southwest up to 20 to 25 miles per hour, especially during the second part of the day there. Uh, and then it'll get chilly in the evening. Tomorrow's going to be a beautiful day too, but we do have to talk about rain chances in the forecast and even beyond the seven day forecast coming up in just a bit. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Police tell us a man shot in the face overnight on the city's west side after having an argument with a woman. The victim then drove off from the scene, eventually calling 911 from his home. All this happening in the 8000 block of Darby Boulevard just before 245 this morning. Our Alicia Beretta is live downtown with more from police. Good morning, Alicia. 
Good morning. Well, that general crime scene took place on the 2900 block of South Laredo Street, so near Guadalupe and South Zarzamora. And police say that they're still looking for the exact spot. So did it happen outside in a parking, a parking lot? Did it happen on the sidewalk or perhaps at the entrance of a home? Again, police are trying to still figure that out. According to police, the victim says he was at Casiano Holmes Apartments visiting his sister and he ended up getting in an argument with a neighbor. That neighbor is a woman. The woman's boyfriend heard the yelling outside, grabbed his gun and fired towards the victim several times. Police say the bullet grazed the man's cheek but left a pretty serious wound to his face. The victim ended up driving off to his apartment on Darby Boulevard, so that's about a mile and a half to two miles away, and finally called police. We know the man was taken to University Hospital. He's now in stable condition, but again, police say that there's still a lot left to this investigation. They don't have the exact crime scene uh, spot. They don't have any witnesses, and of course, they're still looking for that shooter. Max Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. If you guys noticed St. Mary's and Houston Street was blocked off for a few hours last night, we now know why. Just after 11 last night, San Antonio firefighters were called to the Starbucks. This all happened in the 200 block of East Houston on reports of a fire. When firefighters got there, they found the store filled with smoke. Firefighters went inside the coffee shop. They found no fire. They did discover a ventilation duct for the first floors of the high rise was malfunctioning. That's what caused all the smoke in the building. Firefighters took control. They began ventilating the coffee shop. Luckily, no injuries were reported. San Antonio police are still searching for two men accused of a drive-by shooting that sent a 13-year-old boy to the hospital in critical condition. The shooting happened in the 500 block of Vestal Place Friday night. Police say around 10 rounds were fired, hitting the teen in the head while he was laying down in his bedroom. One neighbor who asked not to be identified said he was disturbed when he realized the gunfire wasn't fireworks. He says he hopes the shooters turn their lives around. I'm sure there's help. I mean, you hear about the help that they being out there, you know, their programs that they put up in place, but they don't seek them. They want this kind of life. Police say two men drove off in a white Ford Mustang convertible. They are asking anyone with any information that can lead to an arrest to for this senseless act of violence, they are calling it, to call 210-207-7273. Two men in custody this morning after firing a handgun in the front yard of their home and then pointing it towards a police officer. All this happening around 930 last night. This is the 3200 block of Stephen Foster. Police tell us an officer found a 37 year old and a 44 year old standing outside in the front yard of their house firing a handgun. Police told tell us the officer approached the men and told the two to drop the weapon. But instead, one of those men pointed the gun at the officer. Police say the officer feared for his life. He fired one round towards the men. It did not hit them. Eventually, the suspects did drop the weapon. The investigation is ongoing, and one of the men could now be facing a charge of assault on a peace officer. Well, in news out of Houston, three Harris County Sheriff's deputies have been shot overnight. Information is limited at this time, but here's what we know so far. It happened just before 2.30 this morning. Houston officials say the three deputies were working an extra job when they were shot. At least one of them was said to be in serious condition. All three deputies were taken to a hospital for treatment. Well, coronavirus hospitalizations fell slightly in the Lone Star State, but state health officials say it remains near record high. Texas reported 12,319 COVID-19 patients in hospitals on Saturday, ending five consecutive days of record-breaking hospitalizations. State health officials say ICU units in several parts of Texas are full or nearly full with 626 ICU beds available statewide. There are 96 people who have died from the virus and 3,995 new confirmed cases of COVID-19. And as happy as many of us are to say goodbye to 2020, the harsh reality is we are still nowhere near saying goodbye to this pandemic. And as CNN's Britt Connery reports, doctors expect things to get much worse before they get better. We may have turned the page on a new year, but we're far from turning the page on COVID-19. The U.S. topped 
20 million total confirmed infections on the first day of 2021. More than 10,000 people died here in the last three days of 2020. And Dr. Anthony Fauci says we just have to assume that it's going to get worse. Dr. Nicholas Christakis with Yale University and Dr. Megan Ranney with Brown University agree. We are by no means out of the woods of this pandemic. We're, we're not even at the beginning of the end, I would say. We have more cases, we have more hospitalizations, we have travel that's gonna lead uh, to further surges in January. Now we have this new version of the virus that's going to spread more easily and make our hospitals still more full. Yes, we have vaccines, but the rollout isn't going as many experts had hoped. That is a logistics failure. Looking ahead, Dr. Christakis doesn't think we'll reach herd immunity until 2022. Meanwhile, the germ is spreading. Which is why he puts economic recovery even farther down the line. It's still going to take some time to recover from the social and psychological and economic shock. After that, he predicts a sort of free-for-all reminiscent of the roaring 20s. But until then... We're going to have to continue to wear masks and have intermittent school closures and business closures and gathering bans and so on. A new year, but not a new reality. Not yet. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Well, vaccine distribution, the recent surge in COVID cases here locally, restrictions in place in San Antonio, and the start of a new year. There's a lot going on right now in the Alamo City, and that's why this morning on Leading SA at 8 and 8.30 a.m., Mayor Ron Nuremberg is set to join us live. We're going to be talking about current issues going on in San Antonio and the goals for 2021. You can submit questions right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com, then tune in at 8 and 8.30 on GMSA to hear what the mayor has to say. And if you have a dog, there is a food recall you need to know about. We have all the information coming up in GMSA 8. 33 degrees. Ooh. It is cold this morning. Uh, Sarah Spivey says things will warm up this afternoon, but what does our forecast look like for the rest of the week? She'll let us know when we come back. Well, right now on KSAT.com, Oreo announcing a new flavor for 2021 that combines brownie, cookie dough, and cream. Wow, Oreo's Brookio cookies will debut this <laughs> month, the company says. The Oreo announced Tuesday on social media that it will release its Brookio cookies, a limited edition flavor this year. A traditional Brookie mm. is a dessert bar that combines chocolate chip cookies and brownies. However, Oreo is creating its own signature spin. First traditional dessert. I've never heard of it. Um, second, love this. Have, this is awesome. Really? I've heard of it. Oh, yes. Okay. Have you had one? Yes. Good? Good. All right. The company says the new cookies <laughs> will be available sometime in January, but a specific release date has not yet been announced. To keep up with the cookies official debut or to see which retailers will sell the Brookios, we have the link right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Thoughts? We need to try them on air like we have other Oreo yeah, cookies. Mm. We totally do. Hint, Producers, hint. I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> Bring us cookies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but, you know, I only have like one Oreo and then I'm, I'm done. They're so good. One, mm -mm. I have to pace myself. They're oh no, so you put a whole sleeve in front of me. Mm. Are, well, was it you who put cookies in the break room? No. Okay. So, there's cookies in the break room. And oh, okay. <laughs> Well, thank you for whoever did. Oriana. Breakfast put, of champions. Nice. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's take a look outside with live cam. We've been looking at this picture here. We're close to sunrise, and this camera is looking north and northeast toward downtown. Now, throughout the morning, as we've been looking at this, we've been able to see quick flashes of light across the sky from the quadranted meteor shower that is peaking right now, but with the sun rising, it's gonna be impossible to see them anymore. But it's been pretty cool to see that throughout the morning. Uh, 33 degrees outside, just above freezing at the airport in San Antonio. And there are some areas that are touching freezing out there. Lotus is at 30 degrees, 32 at Rio Medina, 30 in Bulverde. It's 33 at Simpson, 33 at Port Assay, and freezing in Pleasanton this morning, 26 in Kerrville, 29 in Bandera. So a freezing start for some folks out there. It's mainly a light freeze around San Antonio, a hard freeze up in the hill country. 32 in Uvalde, 32 in Creason Springs, and as I mentioned, it's freezing in Pleasanton. But because the air is so dry, it's going to warm up very quickly today. We're only going to see sunshine all day long, and dew points are in the 20s and in the 30s. So look at the 
potential high temperature in San Antonio, 70 degrees. That is a really impressive jump by almost 40 degrees from the start of the day. In fact, by 10, we'll already be at 53 at noon, 62, 68 at 270 for that high temperature and then cooling down very quickly in the evening. We'll be in the 40s by 10. Now today it could also be breezy at times. Winds could gust from the southwest up to about 25 miles per hour, uh, but it's going to be a nice day all in all. A perfect day to go outside. Not only nice here in San Antonio, but across the case at 12 viewing area. High temperature in the upper 60s in the hill country. It'll be near 73 in Eagle Pass, 71 in Del Rio, mid 70s for Catula and Laredo today, and in the low 70s out across our eastern counties closer to the coastal plain. Now it's fairly quiet across the central plains today. If you have travel plans across the state of Texas, you should be totally fine as far as the road goes. Uh, but if you are using the airlines, just know there might be some delays out to the north and to the east from a storm system that's moving there and there are some areas of rain out across the Pacific Northwest. But as I mentioned, we're in between weather patterns here in San Antonio, and it really won't be until Wednesday that we'll have a shot at some rain. Let's take you through the future cast. At that point, there's going to be an upper level low pressure system that will hopefully squeeze out a few showers around San Antonio. But with the cold front moving through, the better rain chances are actually going to be east of San Antonio, closer to the Houston area. Again, this is on Wednesday, and this front is going to be pretty weak. It's not going to drop our temperatures by all that much. And then once again, we'll have a pretty quiet weather pattern. However, we're starting to see hints that we could see a little bit more activity by this time next week. So by Sunday of this next weekend, one of the forecasting models is pointing to the possibility for a good chance for rain around San Antonio. We'll hope for that because we desperately need rain. We're under drought conditions and it would be nice to be able to see a little bit of rainfall. But for most of the week today, it is this week. It is going to be quiet today. Beautiful tomorrow. Beautiful, a little bit warmer morning clouds work their way back into the forecast on Tuesday. It'll be a mostly cloudy day on Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, we'll have that chance for isolated showers, maybe even a few storms, but the better rain chance will be east of San Antonio and then as we round out the week, beautiful, cool weather and then we're going to hold our uh, cross our fingers for Saturday and Sunday for some rain chances, especially on Sunday. All right. Sarah, thank you so much. 33 to start the day, 70 it's sunny. Gotta love it. 646, 33 degrees out. Well, a new movie about a woman on a mission has already won half a dozen awards. We have a preview of Promising Young wo Woman next on GMSA. And take a look at the roadways. Calm and quiet out there right now. Like we said, 33 degrees. Hopefully, y'all are staying put and enjoying your Sunday morning. If anything does pop up, we'll let you know. Pick three, nine, six, one, fireball six, daily four, one, six, one, nine, fireball nine. Cash five, three, four, nine, 11, 20. Lotto, Texas, 13, 14, 18, 20, 44, 52. There it is, Powerball 3, 4, 11, 41, 67, Powerball 5, Power Play 2. Good luck, we'll be right back. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. Now, I can't wait to spotlight this next product. It's Nostalgia in a Box, and I'm seriously considering getting this for my little ones. Create some fun with this retro TV gaming console. It comes with 620 pre-installed games, and it comes with one TV video game console, two hardwired controllers, one audio video cable for TV, one power charger, and one user manual. Now, it's easy to link to your television. You can play games like you did when you were a little one like me. All of this for a crazy low price worth all the fun you'll have while spending more time at home as we all are these days. Now the retail price for this $99 but the game console case at deals price is $39.99. That is a 60% discount. You can get this deal along with many others at caseatdeals.com. Welcome back. A new movie about a woman on a mission has already won a half dozen awards from critics groups. CNN's David Daniel spoke with the Dark Comedy's creator and its star. I'm a nice guy. Are you? Mulligan was writer-director Emerald Fennell's first choice for the role. This film, because it is a bit of a genre-bending thing, because it's dealing with such delicate material, I guess, you know, politically at least, needed someone who was going to be real at the center. 
I just wanted to do it. <laughs> it was really that simple. I just read it and hadn't read anything like it. Cassandra takes on everyone complicit in rape culture. What would you have me do? Ruin a young man's life? If you have a reputation for sleeping around, then maybe people aren't going to believe you when you say something's happened. Fennell feels the power of the piece is that, as in life, everyone thinks they're a good person. This is a movie about good people waking up and being told by someone, a stranger, that they're not good. And there's proof that they're not good. It's every guy's worst nightmare getting accused like that. Really? <laughs> Can you guess what every woman's worst nightmare is? In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Just a reminder in the sports news, Spurs are going to be hosting the Jazz tonight, 6 o'clock at the AT&T Center. Derek White listed as day-to-day -day with a left toe sprain, and LaMarcus also listed as day-to-day -day with left knee soreness. So the question is, will either play? Remember, they just lost two straight to the Lakers, sitting at 2-3. and three. So hopefully they get back to the winning ways. Time now, 6.53, 33 degrees out. Well, let's take a look at what's coming up next on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up on GMA on what is expected to be the busiest travel day since the pandemic began. Experts worry about the risks of contagion as America reaches unfortunate new milestones in cases and in deaths. Plus, more GOP senators are now signaling that they will challenge Biden's election victory as we enter into the final days before the Georgia runoff elections that could determine control of the U.S. Senate. And finally, after a scary collapse on the court four weeks ago, Keontae Johnson rejoins the Florida Gators as Coach key helping his teammates amidst his own recovery. It's all coming up on GMA. We'll see you soon. A man is shot in the face after an argument on the city's west side this morning. Police are still looking for the shooter. The shooting happened around 245 this morning. Police were called out to the 800 block of Darby Boulevard, but the victim says it actually happened about two miles away at his sister's place in Casiano's home apartments on the city's west side. According to police, the victim got into an argument with a neighbor. The woman's boyfriend heard what was going on, grabbed a gun and fired it several times, striking that man in the face at least once. Police say the bullet grazed the man's cheek, leaving a pretty big wound. He's now at University Hospital recovering. Police found the victim on Darby Boulevard because that's where the man lives and that's where he drove himself. As for the scene on Cassiano apartment homes, police say they're still looking for the exact spot and of course for the shooter. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. And if you notice St. Mary's and Houston Street blocked off for a few hours last night, we now know why. Just after 11 last night, San Antonio firefighters were called to the Starbucks in the 200 block of East Houston for reports of a fire. When they got to the scene, they found the store filled with smoke. Firefighters went inside the coffee shop. They found no flames, but they did discover a ventilation duct for the first floor of the high rise was malfunctioning. That's what caused it to fill up with smoke. Firefighters took control. They began ventilating the coffee shop. Luckily, no injuries have been reported. 34 degrees now in San Antonio, but there are a few areas that fell to below freezing. Port SA, Stinson, Holotus at 30 degrees, Bandera at 29 this morning. We will warm up though nicely, 70 degrees for the high temperature. There will be a bit of a breeze from the southwest at about 10 to 15 miles per hour with gusts up to 25 miles per hour possible. So a little breezy, but still a beautiful beautiful end to the weekend and into a holiday weekend for a lot of folks out there. Now tomorrow is going to be pretty similar to today, just a smidgen warmer. And then Tuesday we'll have some clouds in the morning and Wednesday we'll have a small chance 30% for isolated showers and storms as a front moves through. But the better chance for rain will be east of I-35. Pretty quiet to close out the week, but by next weekend we are keeping our fingers crossed for some rain chances. Rain chances look particularly good on Sunday so far. But with a big emphasis on so far, we're going to have to refine that forecast. It's just outside of our 2020 vision. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. We are going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America, but we come back at eight o'clock. We're going to be joined live with Mayor Ron Nuremberg. We're going to be talking about everything from vaccine distribution to the current state of our hospitals to goals for 2021. See you soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now on Good Morning San Antonio at 8, a terrifying motorcycle crash downtown. We have the details from San Antonio police on how it happened.
Plus, we're hearing the latest on where San Antonio stands in regards to the coronavirus. Mayor Ron Nuremberg will be joining us live in today's Leading Essay segment with everything you need to know this new year. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, gorgeous start to a cold Sunday, 34 degrees now. What is the rest of the day? What does the week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, January 3rd, 2021. We talked about our New Year's resolutions yesterday. So Sarah, two days in, how's it going? I'm doing great. I actually went on a run yesterday. I wait till it gets peak temperature because mm -hmm. I cannot handle the cold. I, no. And I wear, a, you know, earmuffs. Even no if it's 30s like, for you? <laughs> no 30s. Sarah, I know you said you didn't get out on a run. No, I didn't. Just right under the bus to start the morning. <laughs> Thanks for shaming me. No, but I, but I understand three-hour naps in what we do are very, very necessary. Yeah, instead of a run, I took a three-hour nap on accident yesterday. That's what you can do when you don't have kids in the house, I guess. All right, it is cold outside right now, but this is a temporary cold. We'll warm up nicely today. It's 34 degrees at the airport, uh, but take a look at temperatures out toward Helotus. It's 29 degrees in Helotus Port. I say at 32, Stenson at 32, and JBSA Randolph at 32 as well. So we did see a light freeze around San Antonio today. A hard freeze though up in the Hill Country, 26 in Kerrville and 28 in Bandera. But again, today is going to be one of those days where you'll dress in layers because throughout the day we'll have a steady warm up. In fact, we could get up into the 70s this afternoon and this week will be mainly quiet and dry, but there is a chance for rain in the middle of the week. So we've got a lot to talk about in the forecast. I'll have that forecast for you coming up soon. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man shot in the face after an argument broke out on the city's west side. San Antonio police telling us the victim got into an argument with a woman that lives at Cassiano Home Apartments. Now, the woman's boyfriend heard what was going on, grabbed a gun and fired it several times, hitting the victim in the face at least once. Police say that bullet grazed the man's cheek, leaving a pretty big wound. That man eventually taken to University Hospital. Police found him in the 800 block of Darby Boulevard, where the man lives. Still, investigators are searching for the exact spot where the shooting happened and still searching for who was responsible. Also new this morning, a 40 year old man was taken to the hospital with multiple injuries after he crashed into a light bulb head on. San Antonio police say the crash happened around 1:30 in the morning in downtown. Officers say the man was riding his motorcycle on the frontage road of Highway 281 near the Tower of Americas when he attempted to take the entrance ramp of 281 southbound and lost control of his bike. That's when he drove through a street sign and hit a light pole head on. His condition remains unknown. Well, we are following the latest COVID-19 numbers, not only here in Bear County, but across the state and throughout the country. Joining us now to break down those numbers this hour is our Alicia Bonetta. She is live in the newsroom. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Max and Sarah. Well, we are going to start off with taking a look at the numbers here in Bear County. Local health officials are reporting 1,298 new COVID-19 cases and eight new deaths. That brings our total number of cases to more than 119,000 since the pandemic began in March of last year. At last check, 1,163 people were admitted in local hospitals. 337 are in the ICU and 198 on ventilators. As far as hospital capacity goes, 16% of staff beds and 53% of ventilators are available. And across the Lone Star State, hospitalizations fell slightly this weekend, but those numbers still remain near their record high. Texas reported 12,319 patients in hospitals, ending those five consecutive days of record-breaking hospitalizations. That's a decrease of more than 160 patients from Friday. Meanwhile, we saw 3,995 new cases and 487 probable cases. A closer look now at the COVID COVID crisis nationwide. In the first update of the new year, the CDC says over 4 million people received a first dose of the COVID vaccine with 13 million doses distributed. That's far short of Operation Warp Speed's goal of allocating 20 million doses for first vaccinations by the end of last year, and the situation in hospitals only intensifying. Overnight, more than 350,000 Americans have now died from COVID-19. We're seeing uh, patients who are coming in with their siblings or their parents, and some of them who are dying uh, alongside their own family members. 
Dr. Hakim, a critical care physician in Southern California, has witnessed the Golden State get pummeled by the virus. Two new cases of that more contagious strain of COVID found in Southern California, bringing the state's total to six. This as infections rates rage out of control. And in California, controversy over who gets help the fastest. California medical staff under fire after giving vaccinations to relatives after at least two hospitals were left with extra doses, according to the Orange County Register. Here in Texas, the city of Houston having their first public vaccine event this weekend. Houston's mayor saying 250,000 people called the health department, but only 750 appointments were available. The chance to get vaccinated, bringing one Houston resident to tears. I'm, I'm really sorry. I just want to get back to life. You know, I just want to get back to normal. I want to see my kids. I want to go back to work. Meanwhile, California, Texas, Florida, and just yesterday, New York, all states hitting one million COVID cases, with Illinois on track to be next. And for many who do get the virus, the recovery can be a long road. I was on a ventilator for 32 days. To me, it was just like one day I fell asleep and then I woke up and was told I missed 32 days. Phil Sherney from North Dakota was transferred to rehab in neighboring South Dakota, but making it home in time for the holidays. His family, grateful. Our community rallied behind us, and I think without faith in them, we would have never got through all this. There's a lot to unpack, but you can follow all the latest coronavirus updates on air and online at ksat.com. Max, Sarah, back to you. Well, the Alamo City is now in the process of administering vaccines, but at the same time, we are seeing another surge in COVID-19 cases. To help us take a step back and break down what is happening in our community, Mayor Ron Nuremberg joining us in today's Leading Essay segment. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, y'all. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So right off the bat, you heard Alicia break down some of the numbers. How would you describe the state of San Antonio in regards to this pandemic? Well, the situation with the pandemic in San Antonio is still very difficult uh, and dangerous. But I will say that uh, as we look into the new year and, and even right now, we're starting to reach a turning point. Um, we know that the holiday season is unfortunately in many ways uh, behind us. Uh, and we are getting to now a, a more um, rigorous part of the vaccination process. So uh, as our healthcare workers, frontline workers and, and others begin to get vaccinated, we all need to continue to exhibit uh, patience and do our part to slow the spread of the, the virus. If we do that, uh, the turning point will work in our favor and we can hopefully uh, by the end of next by the end of this year, uh, be enjoying a much different uh, celebration. So, Mayor, what are you hearing from our local hospitals at this point? The local hospitals are in command of their situation, but um, it, it's very serious. They are stressed. Uh, they are seeing record numbers of admissions every single day with regard to co coronavirus, much higher than even we saw during the summer. Uh, but they are very much working through their protocols to ensure that they're taking care of the patients that they have. The other thing that we're hearing is that the severity of cases is different um, than it was this uh, past year, or excuse me, this past summer. Uh, the length of stay for the average uh, COVID admission is, is uh, significantly shortened. Uh, and I think that's because the, we know more about the virus and also regular you know, residents in general know more about the virus. They're attuned to the, the symptoms and are seeking medical help more quickly. Uh, that allows the doctors and the medical experts to get in front of it uh, on an individual basis, just as we are trying to do so with the pandemic in general. Now, at last check, our threat level was severe. Our positive, positivity rate at more than 19 percent. Our goal, though, is at 5 percent. So what is your message to the people of San Antonio to help curb the spread? Uh, buckle down. Uh, you know, the stress level is an indication of how dangerous it is to go outside and, and to do the activities that we normally would be doing without masks, etc. That It's extremely dangerous to do that because the virus is accelerating. There's a lot of virus out there. And if you put yourself in risky situations, you are more likely to get sick. Uh, so it is a very dangerous situation out there. We're asking folks to be patient, uh, do their part, 
everything that uh, that someone does to limit the spread in their own household, uh, washing hands, wearing a face mask uh, when they go outdoors, keeping physical distance between themselves and people who are not part of their household. Everything that they do in that regard is saving lives and it's also limiting the stress that's on our local hospital system. So continue to do your part and we will get through this this year. And Mayor, following up on that buckling down and continuing to do your part, you know, we've just had the holiday season and families and friends are celebrating together. But in the last month, we've had the big Canelo fight and the Valero Bowl. So do you think that this can send mixed messages about gatherings to our community? You know, what people need to remember is that the virus is dangerous and it can be dangerous anywhere, including your own home. So what we have to do is focus on those behaviors. Uh, physical distancing is extremely important, as is face mask wearing. If we can do those two things and maintain proper hygiene that we always do, we can limit the spread. So in those unregulated environments, it's extremely important that the person exhibits uh, those behaviors and keeps in mind the health guidance. Uh, when there are events, we want to make sure that they are highly regulated, as we did, and they're enforced and there's strict protocols in place. Uh, that Those particular events were done under the guidance of Metro Health. Uh, but, but again, we've got to hold ourselves accountable to everyone doing their part on an individual basis and then as a community. If we can do that, whether you're in your house, whether you're uh, out and about, whether you're at a restaurant or in an event, uh, we can control the spread of this disease. All right, Mayor, thank you so much. We're going to see you again at 830. We're going to talk about vaccinations and some of the goals for 2021. Great. Thanks, y'all. Time now is 811, 34 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, community supporting each other even during the toughest of times, the Hail Mary that came for one business owner. Well, it's a brand of pet food being recalled after dozens of dogs die after eating it. And one sanitation worker is making sure people throw their Christmas lights away properly through the power of social media. We'll tell you all about the filthy film. And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. It's gorgeous out there, but it's also 34 degrees. So we're going to check in with Sarah Spivey with your full forecast right after the break. Welcome back. A Wisconsin waste worker that goes by the name Filthy Film. He's going viral on TikTok after he shared an important holiday message. So that message is for people to stop putting their holiday lights in the recycling. So Film, whose real name is Phil Schreiber, says with Christmas decor getting the post-holiday pitch improperly disposed of light can cause major problems for waste operations. It's no joke. Take a look at the amount of glass that he actually pulled from the gears in just a matter of days. Phil has taken his rancor with his, this recycling wrongdoing viral by posting TikTok vids under his alter ego showing folks the proper way to dispose of their lights and it's working. The videos have already received more than 2.2 million views. Man, our sanitation worker, they have to put up with so much. That is amazing that he's been able to utilize TikTok to figure out a good way of delivering the message. Do not recycle those lights. And That's anything really stringy, really, I've talked to, I've done stories with our waste management here. Mm -hmm. Anything like stringy, straws, um, single, yeah, plastic bags, It'll they get stuck in the in the rollers there, as you can mm. see, so exactly. be careful. And also, you can't recycle pizza boxes because of the grease. Mm. It's true. Those go in the green bins. They do. Did not okay. know that. Yep. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a time lapse from this morning. Venus rising with the sun as it is doing uh, this time of year right now. Uh, outside, beautiful sunrise with clear skies. And although it is cold right now, temperatures are going to warm up because of that sunshine. Speaking of the cold, let's take a look at some of those temperatures around San Antonio. 34 degrees at the airport, but there are neighborhoods around San Antonio that are at freezing. So 32, 31 degrees around San Antonio. Look up to Kerrville, though. Cold in Kerrville, 26 degrees. That's the cold spot on the map. 32 in Yavali, 32 in Pleasanton, 33 in Del Rio, and 39 in Catula. Wider view here. All of us across the state of Texas, pretty uniform in our temperatures with the exception of Brownsville, generally in the 30s around uh, the state of Texas and the, uh, the Central Plains as a whole. And it's pretty quiet, too. It is a very big travel day. So if you're going to be traveling, 
traveling around the state of Texas uh, through the roadways, just know that you shouldn't have any issues weather wise. Maybe traffic will be a little bit different, uh, but weather wise, things are going to be fine for everyone across the great state of Texas. Uh, and really, it's going to stay quiet with sunshine for all of us, including those of us here in the KSAT 12 viewing area. Total sunshine today. High temperatures generally going to get up into the 70s. So what an impressive warm up. We go from near freezing this morning all the way up into the 70s, all because of dry air. 71 for the high in New Braunfels and in Del Rio. 73 in Eagle Pass. A little bit warmer along I-35 there. Uh, 75 in Catula and 75 in Laredo. Notice that temperatures will probably only get up into the upper 60s in Kerrville and in Fredericksburg in the Hill Country, but it's still going to be a beautiful, beautiful day. And and so just to take you through the forecast for the day, even though we're in the 30s, just over the next couple of hours, we're going to be able to get up into the 50s at 10 a.m., 62 at noon with low humidity, sunny, 70 degrees for the high, and a chilly evening as soon as the sun sets. Temperatures will take a plummet into the 40s. By the way, it will be breezy today at times. Winds will be from the southwest at about 10 to 15 miles per hour with gusts potentially up to 25 miles per hour. So a little bit of a breeze. Some folks are going to be taking down those Christmas lights outside today. Uh, and so just know that the weather should be nice for that, especially into the afternoon. Again, the reason for the quick warm up is all of this dry air in place. Dew points at the bottom of our scale. Watch what happens to dew points, though, over the next couple of days. Tomorrow, Dew points will increase a little bit, but still be pleasantly dry and sunny outside tomorrow. And then by Tuesday, we see dew points get into the 50s, which will add a little bit more cloud cover. By Wednesday, a cold front is going to move through, and we'll have just enough moisture with dew points in the 60s to produce a few showers and storms. But the real moisture-rich air is going to be to the east, and so those areas east of us, and, uh, east of us along I-35, have a better chance for showers and storms in the rest. So future cast shows tomorrow morning, waking up just a little bit warmer, 39 degrees for the morning low. In the afternoon tomorrow, 73 for the afternoon high, so a little bit warmer. And then notice how those clouds really start to increase. By Tuesday morning, those clouds will be stubborn. It'll be a mostly cloudy day. And on Wednesday morning, we'll have areas of drizzle before that front arrives. And again, just to emphasize this again for you, the better chance for storms is going to be well to the east of San Antonio, closer to the Houston area. But we'll still call it about a 30% chance for some isolated showers and storms. Beautiful day today, beautiful day tomorrow. A few more clouds on Tuesday. Then after that front moves through, a nice end to the week. Saturday went ahead and put a 20% chance for isolated showers. It looks like Sunday so far Sunday next Sunday. We have a good chance for some showers and storms, but we'll have to really refine that forecast. It's just outside of our seven day forecasting period. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Time now 821 34 degrees out and big day for the Aggies. Sarah. <laughs> There we go. All right, we're going to have all the highlights plus a look at what you can expect in the NFL today. And after the break, making sure one town's memories stays alive during the pandemic, how the Colorado community rallied to help a local business owner. Good morning and welcome back. This pandemic has hit a lot of people around the world pretty hard, especially small business owners. And in Colorado, one of Fort Collins oldest bars, the town pump experienced its darkest year in more than a century in business after sales were down 80% in a couple of months without any financial gain pass. Owner James Latin dress through what he called a Hail Mary. In just a matter of hours, hundreds of people in his community donated to save the pump. And in two days, more than $80,000 was brought in. We did not realize, you know, how powerful that was gonna be. It almost felt like people felt like they owed the town pump something based on memories they had. The support was so overwhelming. It was, it was an incredible experience. I'll never forget it. And thanks to the generous donors, the town pump will have enough to back pay employees and stay afloat until at least through the summer. So that is amazing. We know so many small businesses have had such a tough time this year. And to see the town step up and help out like that is really inspiring. Mm -hmm. All right, 826, 34 degrees out. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, the White House Chief of Staff is speaking out on social media when it comes to the 2020 election. Plus, what the city of San Antonio can expect this year when it comes to the pandemic. Mayor Ron Nuremberg joining us once again with some answers.
Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday, 8.30 this morning, January 3rd. Now Sarah, I posted on social media, couldn't think of a better way to start Sunday Fun Day. So what do you plan for the rest of the day? You know, um, probably just doing some errands and I don't know, maybe getting outside, doing a walk. I saw Sarah had talked about it getting warmer early, uh, later in the afternoon. It's going to be a lot warmer later on today, which I'm excited about. Temperatures are going to be able to climb into the 70s, which is super nice given the fact that we are starting off very, very cold this morning. Let's take a look at those morning temperatures. 34 at the airport right now, 32 though at Port SA and at JBSA Randolph, as well as on the south side near Stenson. So there are areas that are dealing with uh, briefly freezing temperatures. We are warming up already though. 29 in Kerrville, 28 in Bandera, and 30 in Tarpley. A wider View 33 in Del Rio and 39 in Catula. Today's weather is going to be gorgeous after this cold start. Uh, we'll already be in the 50s at 10, 60s at noon, 70 degrees for the afternoon high. It'll be breezy at times with winds from the southwest at 5 to 15, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. It is January, so for our Weather 101 question today, I wanted to ask the question. January ties with February for San Antonio's driest month. How much rain do we get an average on January in January? Uh, take a guess. I'll have the answer for you and our rain chances this week coming up in just a few minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. In your latest news this morning, officials with Joint Base San Antonio confirming a drill instructor assigned to Fort Sam Houston was shot and killed on New Year's Day. We're told 30 year old Jessica Ann Mitchell was shot multiple times. She died around 3 a.m. New Year's Day. San Antonio police responded to a call for a shooting along I-10 near West Avenue. San Antonio police and the Army CID investigating the situation. Not many details have been released so far. We are told, though, Mitchell was on holiday leave at the time she was shot, pronounced dead at University Hospital. Army officials are now asking anyone with any information that can help track down whoever's responsible, call SAPD homicide detectives. That number on your screen, 210-207-7635. Well, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has identified the 16-year-old who accidentally shot himself in the head with an AR-15 rifle last weekend. Police say Raymond Wesson was visiting his friend at a home off of Jackie's farm when they were playing with the gun that belonged to his friend's parents. That's when they say Wesson accidentally pulled the trigger and shot himself. He was rushed to the hospital where he later died a couple of days later. Although police believe the shooting was an accident, they say charges are possible for the parents who were home at the time. It just depends how accessible the gun was. San Antonio police still searching for two men accused of a drive-by shooting that ended with a 13-year-old boy in critical condition in the hospital. All the shooting happened in the 500 block of Vestal Place Friday evening. Police say around 10 Gunshots were fired at the home, hitting the teen in the head while he was laying down in his bedroom. One neighbor who was asked not to be identified said he was frankly disturbed when he realized it was gunfire and not fireworks. He says he just hopes the shooters can turn their lives around. I'm sure there's help. I mean, you hear about the help that they being out there, you know, the programs that they've put up in place, but they don't seek them. They want this kind of life. Police say two men drove off in a white Ford Mustang convertible. Now authorities are asking anyone with any information that can help lead to an arrest. Call 210-207-7273. A lot of Houston, one woman is dead and three Harris County Sheriff's deputies are injured after a shooting early this morning outside of a nightclub. After the set nightclub in Houston closed, a fight broke out in the parking lot. As the deputies who are working additional jobs attempted to break up the fight, a suspect began firing and shot three deputies and one civilian. All three deputies are expected to survive their injuries, including one deputy who is undergoing surgery. The suspect is in custody. Well, in our last half hour, we talked about where San Antonio stands in the middle of this pandemic. That's right. And now we're looking at the latest on the vaccines and what city leaders hope 2021 can bring our community. Joining us once again, Mayor Ron Nuremberg. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning. All right. So the vaccines have arrived here in San Antonio and already University Health has booked up for phase 1B. What does that process look like working between local leaders like yourself and our local medical professionals? Sure, well, we are following the CDC and DSHS guidance in terms of prioritizing the, the populations. In fact, it's those um, entities that set the priority groups for the nation 
in order to and for the state in order to vaccinate our population effectively. Obviously, first, it's frontline health care workers and those who have direct contact with COVID-19 patients. Uh, and then we get into more vulnerable populations that are, are susceptible to severe effects of the illness, uh, those over 65, et cetera. And eventually we'll be getting into the general population. Um, but right now we're coordinating a, a, a very uh, discoordinated system of vaccine distribution that starts with the federal government allocating to states and then the states to the locals. Uh, what UHS has done, I think, is a glimpse into the future, uh, which is that uh, they have, uh, through their own uh, mechanisms, uh, made a call for appointments for folks who are over 65 to go onto the website. Uh, and book an appointment once we have the vaccine available for the 1B distribution. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of work over the next uh, several days and week to help uh, the providers. There's over 90 of them in town that have been allocated uh, vaccine resources. We're going to be working with those providers to provide a more seamless way uh, to, to administer the vaccine here locally. Uh, Mayor, you talked about University Health, they have their big event starting tomorrow where they're going to start vaccinating all those people. Um, yeah. We do know that a lot of that it booked up immediately within two days. Um, yeah. Actually, I actually went online and signed up an elderly relative to get her vaccinated. Now, for the people that missed out, that was only about a two day yeah. window before it booked up. When can they expect for more vaccine openings to open up? Well, we are getting allocations from the state on a weekly basis, and the challenge is there in the priority group 1A, for instance, which is all those health care workers, frontline workers who we need to get vaccinated soon and, and as a first priority, there's over 150,000 of those folks in uh, that priority 1A group. Once you get into 1B and then further into the general population, there's a lot more folks, but there's not enough vaccine to be distributed to them yet. So what they're doing is as they get their vaccine distributions, they're going to be opening up more appointments. And as you know, uh, those those appointments, I think over 10,000 of them were booked up in a matter of hours uh, on Friday. So uh, as more vaccine gets distributed, more appointments will open up. And, and that's what uh, we're going to be focused on is to make sure that people in our community uh, especially those who don't have access to the Internet, for instance, have uh, the information and, and know that there is supply available, where it's available and how they can get signed up. But again, it's going to be a slower process than people would like, simply because, you know, we're trying to get 300 million people vaccinated here in the United States, almost 30 million here in the, in the state of Texas. And we've got uh, hundreds of thousands of folks that need the vaccine as a priority uh, as a priority um, determined by the CDC and DSHS. So obviously, Mayor, 2020 will be known for the pandemic, but what are some of your goals for 2021? Oh, gosh. Well, the, the, the first goal, obviously, is to make sure our community gets back on its feet and gets healthy. Uh, that obviously is going to be the, the focus of our efforts for the, the, the better part of the, the first of the year. Um, but I'm really looking forward to um, students getting back to school and students graduating. Um, you know, I, I can't imagine what it was like to be a student in 2020, having to go through, uh, try to learn and eventually to graduate the one day uh, that they worked for for the for their entire educational career and, and not having the opportunity to walk across the stage and get a diploma or get a degree. Um, I'm looking forward to that coming back. Of course, we're through SA Ready to Work and our workforce and training and Alamo Promise efforts, there's going to be hundreds of thousands of kids who are now uh, or families who are able to access education over the next generation who never were going to be able to before. And we're providing that path to ac equitable, excellent ec education here in our community. And I believe our path for um, improving one's life and economic mobility here in the city of San Antonio is as strong as any in the country. And I'm looking forward to that getting further developed and, and getting underway uh, in 2021. Well, Mayor Ron Nirenberg, thank you again so much for your time this morning. And all our viewers, you can watch this full interview later on this morning on KSAT.com. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you all for what you do this year and, and last and, and Happy New Year to you both. Happy New Year. Well, in your morning headlines, White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows tweeted in support last night of members of Congress objecting to the certification of electoral college results. The tweet said, quote, 
We're now at well over 100 House members and a dozen senators ready to stand up for election integrity and to object to certification. It's time to fight back, end quote. The certification is scheduled for January 6th. The top Indian government panel has approved the use of the AstraZeneca Oxford University COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccine produced by the Serum Institute of India was approved for emergency use in the country. The Drugs Controller General of India will now serve as the final regulator to give the go-ahead for the rollout of the vaccine in that country. An additional vaccine, Covaxin, is developed by, an in, by India's biotech company, which was also approved for the panel when they said, quote, restricted use in emergency situations, end quote. Time now, 8.40, 34 degrees out. All right. It has been a long, long year of college football, and the Aggies ended it the perfect way. We're going to have all the highlights from the big win. Plus, a warning for all pet owners. Our Alicia Barretta will tell us about the deadly product that is being recalled. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City. It looks so nice out there, but it feels so cold. We're going to be back with Sarah Spivey. Tell us how it's going to warm up. Good morning and welcome back. A pet food alert. Booming sales, the biggest game during quarantine, and today's national holiday. Those are the story. <laughs> what is it, Max? Do you know? I don't want to steal Alicia's thunder. OK, OK. Well, those are the story in today's Consumer News. Joining us with the details this morning is our Alicia Moretta. From the new, are you in the news? Studio. I'm in She's the studio. 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 There you are. Good, Good morning, morning Alicia. You. Good morning, Sarah, Max. Well, let's start with a food alert for pet owners. The Food and Drug Administration warning about certain pet foods after 28 dogs died. The FDA says it's due to the aflatoxin in some sports mix products manufactured by Midwestern Pet Foods. The toxin is produced by a type of mold and it can grow on grains used as ingredients in pet food. Pets poisoned by aflatoxin can display symptoms that include jaundice, loss of appetite, and vomiting. The products have been voluntarily recalled by the company. And Tesla reached its goal of making 500,000 cars in 2020. The company says it distributed a number just shy of that. Its 2020 production and deliveries are up by a third compared to the previous year. That's even though COVID-19 shut down Tesla's main factory for two months. Tesla's stock price makes it the most valuable automaker, even though other companies are reporting greater sales. And this one is for the gamers who kept busy during quarantine. Amazon says its biggest selling video game of 2020 was the physical version of Animal Crossing New Horizons. It seems many people try to escape real life by building a virtual one. And here's an odd one. It's National Straw Day. There you go, Max. It's a real national day. Here are a few fun facts. Modern drinking straws have been around since the 19th century when Marvin Stone invented the paper version back in 1880. 88, but if that seems far away, the concept dates back to 3000 BC. Archaeologists found a primitive straw in a Sumerian tomb, which hmm. they think was used to drink beer. Okay. And then we know plastic straws have come under fire recently because they are blamed for harming wildlife after people just throw them away. You can be responsible, a responsible straw user by sticking to the paper kind or better yet by your own reusable steel straw which i have mm. me too if there's I, one thing i have yeah. too much of socks and straws <laughs> really That's yes. Awesome. yes they are difficult to clean you have to get one of those like tiny little pipe cleaners yeah. for them but it's worth it to save the environment absolutely <laughs> worth it and alicia i'm glad you're here because you can help to answer our weather 101 mm. oh. question too all right i'm ready all right here's the weather 101 question for the day in january and february pretty much tie for the driest months in san antonio on average how much rain do we get in january on average max no, no alicia starts oh alicia okay go i'm first. gonna go with c c okay sarah costa b b uh, i will go with a drum roll oh. Woo! it's b sarah costa <laughs> got it right now wow. that's compared to the four plus inches of rain that we see in june so january is a pretty dry month on average for us but we do have a shot at rain this week it's not a great shot at rain but it's there right now outside a beautiful view of downtown san antonio and it's 34 degrees at the airport now that's the official reading at the top of the hour so 48 minutes ago and temperatures have already started to rise though so we'll get a new reading at that at the top of the hour but uh, right at about 8 a.m we had freezing temperatures in Port S.A., Stinson, and JBSA Randolph. 
like I said, with temperatures rising uh, with the sunshine, we're going to have a beautiful day today. 33 in Del Rio, 43 in Rock Springs, 31 in Kerrville, 36 in New Braunfels, and 43 in Gonzales. The air is so dry outside. Dew points are in the 20s and in the 30s, which is at the bottom of our scale. But because of that dry air, we're going to be able to warm up nicely. Here's today's forecast. We'll already be in the 50s by 10, so just in about an hour or so, we'll already be in the 50s. 62 at noon around lunch and then in the afternoon 70 degrees. As soon as the sun sets, however, temperatures are going to take another tumble and we'll be back into the 40s by 10. Today you will notice a bit of a breeze from the southwest at 5 to 15 miles per hour. In the afternoon we actually could have wind gusts of up to 20 to 25 miles per hour, so it is going to be a little bit of a breezy day and elsewhere high temperatures should stay in the 60s in the hill country. But similar story after Del Rio will be in the 70s, 73 in Eagle Pass, 75 in Cachula, and 75 in Laredo for the high temperature, 71 in New Braunfels. So it's pretty quiet across the central plains. We're actually in between weather patterns right now. If you have travel plans across the state of Texas, you should be fine weather-wise. Airlines might experience some delays because of uh, the system out to the east that's bringing some snowfall to the Great Lakes and uh, parts of New England as well. Uh, but generally, like I said, in between weather patterns, we have to wait until Wednesday for an upper level low to swing a weak cold front through San Antonio. That'll give us about a 30% chance for an isolated shower or storm. The better rain chances are going to be east of San Antonio toward Houston. Now this is outside of our forecast period, but by Sunday next weekend, and we are starting to see some hints that we could see another uh, system pop up that could bring us a chance for some showers and storms. I'm hoping that this verifies and that next Sunday we do see some rain because we are under an extreme drought right now around San Antonio. But the weather will be nice today and tomorrow. Pretty similar day tomorrow, just a little bit warmer in the afternoon. Clouds work their way back into the forecast on Tuesday. It'll be a mostly cloudy day. And then on Wednesday, there's that arrival of that front with a 30% chance for an isolated shower shower or storm. And then let's take a look at the rest of the week. It'll generally be pretty cool and quiet until hopefully Sunday when we can see some more rain. Max. Thank you so much, sir. Well, people with the cube, let's see if I can make it on over there. Strong finish to the Aggies. Sarah, you want to give us a gig em? All right. <laughs> strong, strong end to a very weird, weird year of college football. A&M Aggies taking on North Carolina Tar Heels and Mac Brown. Yes, that Mac Brown in the Orange Bowl. Kelman passing 232 yards, ran for a score. The Aggies in the Orange Bowl for the first time since 1944, one spot away from making the college football playoff. Well, A-Chain was the talk of the town. He finished as the game's MVP, 140 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Final score, Aggies win big, 41-27. They finish the season 9-1. Pro football. All right, from college to the pros, Dallas Cowboys fighting for that playoff spot head-to-head -head with the Giants also fighting for the playoff spot. Game set at noon at MetLife Stadium, Giants home turf. Meanwhile, the other Texas team, the Texans, they are already eliminated from the playoffs. They don't even have their first round pick. They are taking on the Tennessee Titans, who are fighting for the playoffs. That is 325 today. The game, NRG Stadium in Houston. And just a reminder, the Spurs are back in action after two pretty bad losses to the Lakers. They are going to be hosting the Jazz tonight, 6 o'clock at the AT&T Center. Still no fans in the stands. Derek White possibly out. LaMarcus Aldridge possibly out. We are running out of time. So I'll just tell you right now, Sarah Costa, it is 8.52 and 34 degrees out. Thank you, Max. Well, are you ready to get rid of the quarantine 15? Yes. As many as 40% of Americans say they have gained weight during the pandemic. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll list some of the top ways you can get started. We're already at 48 after a freezing start, so you know it's going to be a nice day. 70 degrees for the high temperature, a small chance for an isolated shower or storm in the forecast on Wednesday. Other than that, pretty quiet over the next seven days. All right, Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Happy birthday to my Aunt Shelly. Love you. Happy birthday, Aww. Aunt Shelly. See y'all later. Birthday, Aunt Shelly. <laughs>